Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Kessler from Kessler Insurance, and I am here today doing one of the things I love most, um, another interview for Cheers for Charity New Hampshire with my dear friend, Joanne Burchuk. Hey, Joanne. Lisa, thank you. Hi, I'm Joanne Burchuk. I'm with Lighthouse Physical Therapy. And again, we have a great guest here today to share with you. Um, we have Bobby from Artisan, and we're so looking forward to hearing about his organization and what their mission is. So, Bobby, welcome and uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about it. Sure. Thank you guys so much for having me. I love talking about Artisan. It's a, a labor of love and something that's really near and dear to my heart. So, uh, we are a nonprofit organization uh, based here in the seacoast of New Hampshire. We founded, uh, we actually started uh, our work in 2019 as a combination of uh, brain projects between one of our co-founders, Amanda Whitworth, who was interested at that time in starting an art pharmacy, uh, and myself, and um, actually my husband, Robin Marcotte, who is a physical theater uh, educator and professor, um, who were always interested in the marriage of art and medicine. Uh, and it was one of those you know, pe people in the right place, the right time. Uh, and we said, let's, let's try to put our, our thoughts together and try to create something um, for our community. And so in May of 2020, we actually founded uh, the organization Artisan as a 501c3 and the rest is history. So our mission is um, we are dedicated to integrating the arts and medicine to inspire uh, healthcare providers. Um, and the goal is to deliver more empathetic and effective patient care. And what our vision is to have this universal delivery of uh, empathetic and effective patient care that actually embraces the arts to support the healing and well being for not only healthcare providers, but also their patients. Uh, I myself am a family medicine physician. I trained uh, as well uh, in the field of preventive medicine and public health. And so I've always been interested in um, connecting with the community and um, trying to make. Uh, the, the practice of medicine be more uh, relevant to folks. And uh, so that's our organization in a nutshell. We do a, a number of different programs um, and we can, I'm sure we'll get into that, but basically think of Artisan as three arms. Um, we have uh, an arm where we do performances uh, that tend to focus on content that is, um, you know, uh, public health or medical in nature, uh, things that are very relevant to folks. So we have shows on um, addiction. We have shows uh, that focus around relationships within um, a, a marriage. Our newest show right now that we're working on uh, focuses on anxiety and the, the preponderance of anxiety in our, in our community. Um, and then we have a couple of the performances with talkbacks afterwards. And we often will try to uh, invite uh, not only community members, but also healthcare folks uh, to be a part of that conversation. We also uh, create um, and deliver arts and somatic workshops into different uh, populations, whether or not it's in a, a healthcare uh, schooling setting, like uh, either a medical residency or uh, nursing training programs, or um, sometimes we actually uh, deliver content digitally, especially these days, uh, where that's becoming much more of a relevant uh, modality, which I can talk a little bit about later. And then finally, we have an arm where we deal with something called standardized patients, which is a component of medical training. Um, and uh, the way that we got involved in that is that both Amanda and Robin are standardized patient uh, educators uh, themselves. And it's a way of incorporating actors uh, into medicine. So it's a really cool, um, you know, bridge there. So, so say a little more. The last, the last piece you were talking about. Are you working with um, a particular organization when you're kind of in integrating yourself um, with these programs? Or sure. It, interestingly, right now our folk, you know, COVID, as I'm sure you've talked to all the nonprofits that you've spoken with, has sort of made all of our organizations, all the organizations that I work with, pivot a bit in terms of how we we do our programming. And right now, we actually don't have a uh, focus. Uh, particularly on the standardized patient components, because many, uh, you know, medical schools and nursing training schools are actually having some challenges with um, employing and doing uh, standardized patient programs. But in general, the goal of those programs are to help um, health care uh, students essentially practice that bedside manner, that experience of talking with patients that you need to 
sort of grow with uh, in your training before you're actually out uh, in, in the real world. So as, as a, a doc myself, I've had many a patient standardized, a standardized patient experience, uh, interacting with an actor who is familiar with the script uh, and goes back and forth with me as, as the student trying to engage either in the interview um, or um, you know, discuss uh, um, you know, a certain medical problem. But right now our, our, our main components are having to do with uh, performances and having to pivot and make some of those in person, some of those digital, um, and then you know, engaging in these um, somatic workshops. So um, I don't know if you wanna hear about some of the programs that we, we have right now, but- um, Yeah, no, definitely. Sure, so we just wrapped up our first pilot uh, version of a program called Frontline Healthcare Worker Program or Project. And it, it centers around um, offering stress mitigation art experiences uh, to healthcare folks who, as you probably imagine these days, are pretty stressed. <laughs> um, uh, and we deliver them virtually and on demand uh, digitally. So the, the, the origin of this came from, you know, I've, I've been doing a lot of hospital uh, shifts and seeing patients and you know, wearing masks and all the garb uh, to keep us uh, protected all day. And I found the only real time I had during my work day, my 12 hour you know, shift was when I sort of either removed myself from the floor, went to the bathroom and took my mask off and just sort of splashed some water on my face or ran down to the cafeteria to grab a quick bite to eat. Um, and I kept thinking, there are a lot of people who want to help uh, mitigate stress for healthcare folks and give, you know, the hospitals will have advertised, oh, you know, tonight there's going to be a, a yoga workshop or, or, you know, this weekend we can do this extra um, program to try to address stress. But as a busy healthcare person myself, the last thing I really wanted to do was spend more time outside of my work day, you know, focusing on, um, you know, de-stressing at work. So, you know, nothing to knock those, those programs, but uh, that's sort of how this um, project came about. So, we actually employed um, over a dozen artists uh, across the country actually to do these short two to four minute somatic exercises, including um, breathing, uh, short breathing exercises, doodling, um, singing, you know, facial movements uh, to try to engage folks um, to take a second to breathe and to uh, you know, de-stress. Um, and we did it through a QR code where you can use your phone to, to scan it and it brought you right to this video. And um, it, we got some really good feedback from the uh, folks over at Concord Hospital where I trained uh, with our first iteration. And our goal, this next stage is to do a larger pilot with a larger healthcare organization and get some more feedback. Ultimately, I wanna see this program in hospitals across the state. So, you know. That was actually like my next question too. is, yeah. you know, how, how, how do you, how do you get this out to everybody? How do you, is it something that like a hospital would, um, I don't know, adopt as a program and then like roll out to their people or um, how do yeah. you get the word out that like, this is a great program for their, their employees? No, that's a great question. I, you know, there is a pretty good network of, you know, through the New Hampshire Hospital Association that I, I have some connections with. But I think ultimately, once we have a final product that is, you know, very usable and user friendly, um, I would like to have it be um, shared. And I think that's one of the beauties. One of the, the great things about digital access is that, you know, it can be shared with just a, Q, I don't know if you're familiar with QR codes, but it's basically like a quick, easy way. When I discovered that, I'm like, oh, that, that's amazing. You know, it's a quick, easy way to share uh, yeah. a lot of content, you know, in a really quick, easy way. Um, so that, that's the goal. And, I, and, you know, there are many, um, very many, most hospital systems have a wellness department or dollars that they are trying to use to help uh, mitigate stress of their workers, right? Burnout is real um, for in all uh, areas, but in particular in healthcare. So, I think this is something, certainly whenever I bring it up to, to folks, they, they speak very um, you know, excitedly about it. So it's something that people are looking forward to. And, um, it sounds can, like even beyond the healthcare, you know, um, uh, fire, police, rescue, you know, like there's so mm -hmm. many high stress jobs that could use that opportunity to de-stress themselves. So 
Uh, sorry, Lisa, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was just curious is, um, you know, you talked about how you work your way through the medical organizations to get to those stressed, you know, whether they're frontline workers or other medical professionals. Can those people come to you directly? Yeah, absolutely. We've had, um, I've had a few folks um, reach out individually um, from different healthcare organizations. Our, our, one of our next programs that we're doing um, that's slightly different, um, but was a result of people reaching out to us directly and saying, hey, we, would, we have this need, can you help us with, um, there's somebody from the North of Boston Cancer uh, Resource Group uh, reach out to us. And I guess they do a, um, I wasn't familiar with them, but they do a monthly uh, virtual program where they invite uh, folks uh, affected by cancer, whether or not the pa patients themselves who were just diagnosed or at the end of their treatment, friends or families, caregivers, um, and they, this, uh, these, this year they were saying they're focusing on the expressive arts as a modality. And so, you know, when people reach out to us, we, we try to figure out the best way that we can help uh, partner, whether it's creating a new program or a new product or deploying one of our um, workshops, as I was saying, these arts and somatic workshops. So it's more of a um, focused version of those two to three minute uh, experiences. This would be like an hour workshop. Performances. Where do people generally see them? Is <laughs> yeah. So that's a really interesting question because one of the things that we are actually interested in doing is actually exploring sort of non-traditional uh, spaces. So both Amanda and Robin have experience, you know, performing across the world, um, both in traditional um, area, you know, theater spaces as well as non-traditional spaces. They did a couple of uh, performances uh, in like an office building lobby uh, in Manchester. Um, we've done uh, several performances of our uh, one show called Shadows, which is you can um, visit our, our website, artisan.org. There's a couple of links there to, um, to learn a little bit more about the show. But we've done that in um, hospital conference rooms, right? So uh, one of our um, goals is to try to break, the, break down the walls of the traditional theater um, space and sort of bring art to people where they're at. Um, that being said, sometimes it is sort of helpful to have some uh, familiarity to delivery of content. So um, we were planning on doing an in-person uh, version of um, Shadows at the Stockbridge Theater in Derry this March. Uh, we did have to uh, pivot to uh, virtual, a virtual performance only because uh, it was looking a little dicey a couple of uh, weeks ago, and we just wanted to make sure that we were able to prepare and deliver as um, uh, you know, high quality a, a piece. So Tuesday, March 29th, at 7 p.m., we have a digital uh, performance of, of, of Shadows, and it's a professionally um, shot um, performance that is, is pretty, pretty moving. So I, I think that will be um, a great version of, of, of Shadows. Um, we are hoping to do and deliver our newest show called The Anxiety Piece, uh, premiering in August. Um, right now, our thinking is that it's probably going to be in the Concord area, but we need to secure a space. Um, but the goal of the anxiety piece is to raise awareness and destigmatize general anxiety, which we all know uh, we're seeing a lot more of these days. Um, and this piece, you know, I know we're talking about mental health and addiction, it's, it can seem very heavy. This piece, for, in particular, as a non artist part, person of the group, I, I had asked, can we try to incorporate a little bit more lighthearted uh, spin on things? <laughs> and so this piece is, is really uh, fitting the bill on that. It's more of a, I think they described it as Calvin and Hobbes meets Donnie Darko. <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> yeah, it, I'm excited about that. Well, it's, it's great. You guys do so much, um, it, so many interesting things. And I can see the ideas are just all around, you know, that you've got a million of, of other things that you will probably be doing in the future. So um, the best way for people to get more information, visit your website, do you use social media? What's the, yeah, what, how do you so communicate with it, with the community? So, so uh, the website artisan.org, we do have a presence on social, on social media, you know, all the platforms, um, but we have a, you know, get in touch with us button. You can fill it out um, and people use it all the time. Uh, you're also, feel free to email me directly, bobby, B-O-B-B-Y -B 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 at artisan.org. Um, and we're always looking for partners, uh, both in the healthcare world as well as artists. 
supporters, both individual and corporate sponsors. Uh, and, um, you know, if you have any ideas or, or questions um, and want to, to partner, we're, we're all about it. So please reach out. Uh, we also have a newsletter that it's um, free. We don't bombard folks with information, but that is a way that people have asked that we can share right now quarterly. Um, so it's an email newsletter. Perfect. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Bobby. This has been so informative and thank you for what you're doing, trying to make life just that much better for people in our community. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thanks, Joanne.